you are about to watch an interview with a special, special guest. I'm so excited. They're gonna share some very special tips with you that no one has ever seen before except the students of the I Am Code. This is my art school for intuitive artists. There are um, gonna be question and answers at the end of this recording, and it'll really bring home the message that they're that we're talking about in this recording. So I hope you enjoy. Be sure to like and subscribe and watch the next video that we post on another special guest. Thank you so much again for watching. I don't want to miss a minute of you speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. How are you doing, James? I'm great. It's a beautiful day. I'm sitting outside, so awesome. everything's good. Where are you in the world right now? Uh, Austin, Texas. Oh, great. My family is there. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. So thank you so much for being open and doing this with us. We're really excited to talk with you today. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, cool. Well, this is my community. It's we call the the cool. The school is the I am code, the intuitive artist mastery code. And it's for intuitive artists to grow and thrive and find their authentic voices and build their creative legacies. And you have been found by one of our members, Katinka, and would love to just hear about your journey. And I've got some questions for you to start. But then I'd love to open it up for a Q&A if you're open to that at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sweet. Absolutely. Sounds good. Cool. Well, you are a very creative, inspiring man and um, just love what you're creating and what you're sharing with the world. It's so awesome. Really cool. So what started this journey for you? When did it begin really? Uh, I mean, I've always been a uh, creative in some capacity, you know, uh, whether that's, you know, just drawing as a kid. And then, uh, you know, I grew up in a very um, small town in Minnesota. And it was just like, I had just lots of space to like, just wander and like, let my imagination go free. Like, um so we, me, my friends and I were always just making up adventures and just like you know going on uh you know fun explorations and stuff so I was always just kind of imaginative and creative and when I was in like probably like middle school like late middle school I found like all of these poetry books that my mom that my mom had around the house and I started reading poetry and uh, I don't know what like connected me with that, but I just resonated with it. And uh, I was probably like 14 when I started writing my own poetry. And, um, and I just like wrote poetry like all the time after that, like in high school, like I had just like notebooks piled up <laughs> with poems. Wow. And, um, and at a certain point I like started like painting and going back into drawing and when it was time for me to kind of like go to college or whatever, I chose to go to art school because it just seemed like the most feasible, um, option. Like it just seemed like to do something creative like that. I don't know why I didn't choose to do like writing. I just felt drawn to do the, like the like the arts like I felt like graphic design was a good um, thing to explore um, is and, that what you focused on yeah 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 so I was I, I went to I majored in graphic design at an art school in Minneapolis and uh, began a professional career as a graphic designer so I worked for like advertising agencies and and things like that as a as a designer and uh, and then I kind of got bored with that. So I, I, I switched to doing like brand strategy, which is more just kind of like holistic 
creative thinking where I was doing writing and I was like, I was like naming brands and like coming up with like taglines and like marketing campaigns and all that kind of brand strategy stuff, which was like a different, like creating, creating like, like PowerPoint presentations and stuff like that. And I did that for a long time. And I, I moved to New, York, to New York City and I was doing that in New York City. And I guess while I was doing all that stuff, I, uh, I started to like explore like more, like more deeper, like type of spirituality and uh, like Buddhism and things like that. And that's when I started working on my own, like my first book kind of came out of that called shit your ego says and uh, so I, I wrote that while i was still like working in advertising and um and then like the memes the like my 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 internet art and like my memes and stuff like that that came like a little bit more recently i was just because you, you know we all share our our thoughts and work on social media and um at a certain point it was like during the pandemic when i just like the world was so crazy and upside down that like normal writing and like normal forms of communication didn't seem to express the craziness that we were all living in so but then i like started to like experiment with like making memes and like that was like a different something clicked with like being able to just um, communicate the absurdity of the world through this like weird artistic format. And uh, that's when my platform really started to, t to take off because, you know, it turns out that memes are pretty popular online and people like to share them. So yeah, that's kind of what, and then I was sort of write, writing a lot of poetry at that time for the same reason. It was like poetry has a way of like with nuance and subtlety to like I could I could communicate the weirdness of the world in a way that you can't in just like regular communication. There's something like more fuzzy about poetry where you can really express it's not as literal. And yeah. anyway, all of that kind of came together. Uh, and then just recently I um I published my second book, which is a collection of poems and memes that were all inspired by this past year. And basically the the craziness of the of the world that we're living in today i love that book i've been looking at what you're posting about it and i can't wait to order it it's thank awesome you. yeah thank you where's the best place for us to order that because i know i saw it it's like there's a link on your site to um a specific place to buy it but then it's also available on amazon do you have a I, I don't think it matters it's available on uh, through my publisher and their their link is in my bio on Instagram and it's called, um, it's called, well, the store is called shop catalog and it's also available on Amazon, but and they're I'm pretty also sure. The publisher? Sorry. Huh? They're also the publisher. Um, yeah, well the publisher, their, their name is thought catalog. Gotcha. Their, their store online is called shop catalog. Um, so it doesn't matter where you buy it. I think that cause it, it's Amazon is they're just using Amazon as a, like a dis a dis distributor so like it, it, it's the same difference i don't think like amazon is selling it i think they're using amazon as a distributor so whether you buy it for amazon or from the publisher i think it all i'm pretty sure it all evens out okay cool awesomeness mm -hmm. oh cool i want to uh i was gonna ask you this more at the end but i i want to jump into it now because we are all really excited about this and you're already dabbling in it and it's the nft part of what you're working on can you give us like a quick rundown of like what does that even mean and how are you using it and how is it going for you yeah well i'm just starting i mean i haven't even sold any nfts yet i'm just i haven't like i'm just starting to like put a collection together so do you guys know what like NFTs are high, like a high level or is it all kind of new? It's fairly heads. new to us. Like, let's just do like a yeah. basics of what so you know. it's, it's new to everyone and I'll do my best to explain it. Um, but I'm sure you're all familiar with like cryptocurrency. And so basically what enables cryptocurrency to be so like secure um is is it's built on this blockchain technology 
So it's hard to explain, but essentially there's this ledger that exists in, you know, the cloud and a blockchain ledger is so is more secure because it's got there's like thousands of different kind of computers that all mirror each other. So you can't like hack one computer um, because all the computers are mirroring the same like information. So it's essentially like unhackable. Um, you know, like it's like it's like it's like a an advanced version of the internet. It's like the it's almost a blockchain is almost like the internet part two, I think. So it's really secure. And there's a the um now blockchain is um is kind of has inspired a new form of art. And the basic premise NFT stands for non-fungible token. And what that means is non-fungible just means it, it can't be repeated. So like, for example, you can make a lot of copies of the Mona Lisa, like, like if you have like a online image of the Mona Lisa, but there's only one Mona Lisa, like the, the Mona Lisa is non-fungible, meaning you can't, you can repeat an image of it, but you cannot replicate the exact Mona Lisa. It's, you, it's impossible. There's only one. And you can't do that with digital stuff because digitals, you can just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. But NFTs, it's a way to like program the art into the blockchain. So essentially you're creating a non-repeatable version. So even though you could repeat, you could like take a screenshot, you could repeat the image. It, 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 it gives like proof of ownership of this one thing. So it almost takes like art, like real art is valuable because it's scarce. There's only one, there's only one. And it, it kind of gives that same level of scarcity to digital art. So cool. So it's like, cause that's what ha scarcity has value. So it's a way of building in scarcity into digital art. And it's been, it's gotten really popular really fast. <laughs> and yeah. now people are making, you can make an NFT out of like virtually anything anything digital. Um, I think you can even like probably do like an NFT version of a book. And uh, like, for example, I did the first, you can do like a video, a video can be an NFT. So I did, um, I, I created a um, NFT out of a spoken word piece that I did. I'm going to share the screen and show. Is that cool? Yeah. So let's see here. I think we are here. Yeah. I was this out. This one's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is your page, and you're using. This is Open my page. C. I'm using OpenSea. Okay. There are a lot of uh, stores that sell NFTs. Um, OpenSea is one of the the biggest and most popular. So these are all this these are all pieces of art that are for sale. And does this mean it's fifteen cents? No, it's um so. NFTs are primarily they're built on um, the Ethereum um, blockchain. So Ethereum is one of the most popular cryptocurrencies. And basically, you can take the Ethereum technology and like host things on that same framework. So NFTs are typically sold and bought with Ethereum because they're hosted on the Ethereum blockchain. So essentially the, the, the price is, um, it's like point, I think most of them are 0 0.2 Ethereums. So that in dollars that changes depending on the price of Ethereum. But right now Ethereum is, I don't even know, like $600 or like maybe like I thought, I don't even know. But so these, these average out to being like essentially like 500, dollars or like four hundred dollars each these pieces of art <laughs> wow. so and you, and you know as an artist gets more popular and you know these these can increase in, in value and then you can resell them just like regular art so the per the person who purchases it can resell it correct but then i've got it set up you can set it up so the original artist gets a credit gets a gets a percentage of all of all transactions. So I think these are set up for 10%. For 10%. So if someone bought this and it goes up 
and they keep and then it's sold and sold and sold. Every time it's sold, I get 10% of that transaction. We don't get that with original art. No. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really built. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty artist friendly. Thank you for sharing how that works with us. And if you could scroll down for a second, like that the one, the image of me, that, that, the, the image of me. So this is, um, this is the first ever, this is a video and it's the first ever, um, like spoken word piece, um, that's been created into an NFT. So it's kind of like one of a kind, like the, like art has gotten popular on NFTs, but like writing hasn't quite yet. So I'm trying to kind of bridge the gap between, you know, literature and, you know, NFTs in the digital space. Wow. Very cool. Very, very, mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah, it's ex it's exciting times. So when someone purchases it, purchases it, this goes into your account in that form of cryptocurrency that then you accumulate in this site. Yeah. So this is connected. So you have to have a, it's called a wallet. Um, so I have a wallet that's connected to my OpenSea account. So if, if someone purchased this, it would, that money would be deposited into my crypto wallet, hmm. which is like a, which is like an app essentially like it, like it just, a, yeah, a, a, a wallet app on my phone. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. So it sounds really popular. It's, it sounds really complicated and it kind of is, but you know, it's not as hard to learn as it sounds like once you just learn a few of the basics, like it'll make sense. Everything new sounds really confusing at first, but, um, you know, once you kind of know the language of the cr crypto world, this is fairly straightforward. It just seems really confusing at first. So cool. So cool. So so awesome that you're you're just diving right into we all are working on some things and getting ready to do this too so this is super exciting and helpful to hear your experience with it mm -hmm. so cool so you you are doing so many different things too uh you have courses and a podcast and a crazy successful Instagram that you're making memes for and you're painting and you're writing and you're publishing and making merchandise and all kinds of things. Like what is a day in a life with you or a month or like, do you plan out your years? I don't, I don't even, projects? I don't even, I don't even plan out my days. Really? No, not at all. Okay. I just wake up and do whatever comes to me. And if I'm working, if I'm working on a project then I'll like sit down and work on my project. But for the most part, I leave myself complete freedom, um, to be fluid and do whatever I want. Love it. Um, you know, some things get scheduled. Like I'm doing, I am doing, um, I'm just starting to do like online courses. Mm -hmm. So I would just, I just finished my first one and we're going to have a second one. So then I've got, I've got like a partner I'm working on with this and, and then she, you know, she gives me deadlines for stuff because that's not my, <laughs> you know, setting, managing the schedule of things just isn't my strong suit. So she'll give me some deadlines that I, then I have to follow those. But, um, so I do have certain deadlines and I, you know, I get invited to, so I'll have like, that's kind of thing scheduled. You get invited um, to what you just cut out there. Oh, I get invited to podcasts. Okay. So like, and I, and I do my own podcasts, so I'll have those kind of blocked in my schedule, but for the most part, I try to give myself freedom. I try not to schedule anything in the morning. Like this interview for me is at noon and that's pretty much the earliest that I'll try to schedule something because I find myself to be most like my channel is most open in the morning before like all the daily, you know, just like the all the noise and distractions of the day, um, then it's harder for me to be creative. So I try to at least have up until noon just for like, like today I was working on a poem, like for a couple hours. Um, and I just decided to, to do that this morning. You know, I could have done memes or I could have like worked on something else, but um, I, I like to have that morning just for like my own, wherever, wherever my creativity flows, like I kind of just, get in a meditative state and just 
kind of see what comes to me. And then I just, you know, do that. I need, I, I, I some people wake up and they're like, I need to write 5,000 words before breakfast. And that is like the opposite of what I do. I, I let myself, like I might, I'm a slow writer, honestly. So if I'm writing like a book or something, I might spend all morning working on one paragraph. And that's fine as long as, you know, I get the paragraph how I like it. Then I don't rush myself or hurry myself. I'd rather just like take my time to get things right. I'm the same way as you. That's really cool and affirming to hear as well. That's awesome. It's a very, we're very privileged to get to live that way, I think, too. It's really special. Yeah, well, I used to work on deadlines, like when I worked in graphic design and I worked in advertising and all that. I've, I, I'm used to like having really tight deadlines. So that's probably good training just to like learn how to finish things and get stuff done. So I, I, I'm not like I do finish things and I, I, do, I, I still am very disciplined. I just let myself get there however I, however I want to, but I'm always still like going somewhere. I'm not like, I'm not completely wandering off into the, you know, the distance I'm, I'm taking a winding road, but I am always like going forward. Mm -hmm. You've had that structure. So you, you're like, like, that's, that's the, the trails like paved and grooved and. Yeah, I think so. Cause I think work, I mean, I think I was just, uh, it was good, even though I, I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. It was really good practice to work you know, in a, you know, in, in like advertising where my creativity had a lot of deadlines. So I needed to learn to finish things and get it done. And, you know, so that, 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 that was just, you know, cause, cause I think for a lot of creatives, finishing things is a challenge. It's like, they can start things, but it's like finishing it is, is where the block is. So if, so some people might need to have strict strict deadlines in order to um, push them to finish because that might be a block for them, you know, because I, I spent years having tight that deadline. So I kind of like, I, 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 even if it takes me longer, I know, I know that I'm going to, at some point I'm going to wrap it up and <laughs> call it, call it done. Right. Right. Is that something you're focused on in your course, helping I mean, it's called uh, flow and form, right? Is the main course. Yeah, exactly. So my friend Christina and I were launching, it's kind of like a school um, called Recreation Studio. Cool. And it's like, we're going to teach various types of like creative courses. And the main one we're doing now is called flow and form. And there's really, it's really two courses, flow and form. And it's kind of like the yin and yang of creativity because both are important. Like the principles of yin and yang are, are universal. You could also call them the principles of the feminine and the masculine and the yin or the feminine. That's the flow um, part of the course. And that is the, you know, um, being receptive and open to ideas. It's like giving yourself rest and, um, you know, spending time in nature and just really essentially connecting with your intuition because i think we live in a society that tends to jump right into um the yang which is you know do 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 yeah you know productivity you know work hard and like take action but unless you have that yin and your intuition and you, you know your inspiration then you're gonna it's like you can't um you need to fill your own cup before you can, you know, give it to others. Okay. So we're really trying to teach like the full spectrum of creativity. And, um, we're starting, we're, we're we ran the, 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 the yin or the, you know, we call it flow, um, a couple months ago. And, and we're going to run that one again in this winter. Um, and then move on and teach the masculine and the form, which is really about putting things together and actually creating the work and putting it out into the world. Beautiful. Very mm -hmm. in alignment with you on that. Very mm -hmm. cool. Very cool. 
um, how do you think about how spirituality or how does your spirituality connect in with all of your projects and maybe more of the business side of what you're working on building spirituality yeah well i think that i mean for me i think spirituality and creativity are the same thing like i kind of say that like my my spiritual path is creativity and because if you think about it like what is creativity like you are your imagination and your intuition is essentially connecting with some unseen space realm and you're getting an idea and then you're bringing it back down into earth and you know manifesting it uh, in, in physical reality so that's like that's like a relationship with the unknown it's the relationship with the spirit world so i think that the act of creativity is by definition a, a spiritual ritual and when you acknowledge when you know that and you acknowledge it then you can use it so that's why it's so important to cultivate your intuition so you can you know do that um so yeah i just i i i don't have a lot of spiritual practices or rituals outside of my creative practice you know so for me those two are really connected mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Very cool. Well, I would love to open it for questions. And I know you all have some. Sound good? Yeah, okay. Anyone, just feel free to unmute yourselves. Dive in. Hello. Um, I do have a question. Um, I was wondering what your idea or vision um, is for like how artists can help change the world or, you know, like uh, empower. Uh... <laughs> I think he's distracted. No, no, I'm listening. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, how how artists can like inspire or uh, empower or I guess feed the the vision of a new paradigm or because mm. I feel like your art is so like involved in that, you know, creating a bridge. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's super important. Like basically before anything can happen in the world, like it has to be imagined first. 